In this latest Creating with Data video, we're going to do a walkthrough of the code behind this rotating globe graphic, which has been created with D3GS and Web Canvas. It's basic, but it's the sort of thing that could provide a very useful basis for a more sophisticated uh, visualization of uh, global geospatial data. Okay, to start with, we'll take a look at the markup. Um, there's not anything too special going on in in the markup actually, uh, not in the head element anyway. The main thing that we're doing is we are um, loading two modules, D3 version seven and topo JSON client version three. Um, so if you look at NPM at a topo JSON client, you can use that for manipulating topo JSON. Um, it says to merge shapes, quantize coordinates. We're not doing any of that. Actually, what we're doing is we're using it to convert back to GeoJSON for rendering. Um, so it says here, um, rendering with such tools as, as D3 Geopath. That's exactly what we're doing uh, later on. So in the middle here, we have article element and in there there's um, our canvas where we're gonna draw our globe graphic to and that we identify with um, an ID of globe. Um, so the script kicks off with a definition of the height and width. I'm just using the inner width of um of the window uh, i'm basing it off of that so that my globe is going to be you know kind of appropriately sized for uh for the window um i guess this could be a bit more sophisticated take into account aspect ratio but i'm not doing that uh, the next thing we do here is we select um that canvas element that we want to draw to and we're going to set the attributes to uh, the height and width attributes. And then we get what's called context. Um, so canvas elements are are intended for, for drawing, right? So getting the context gives us access to the, the drawing functions, the canvas drawing function. So this is gonna be important later on. And the next thing I'm defining here is the projection. So the projection is how we render, uh, how we decide to render our uh, geographic data. Um, how are we going to display it? Now I'm using geo-orthographic. There are a bunch of other projections you can use out there. Um, in fact, if you go to D3Geo, and um, you'll see all the different types of, of projections. You'll probably recognize Mercator, that then there are some more exotic ones that if you're not into your maps, you might not have seen before, like Geotransverse Mercator here. In fact, if I replace Geoorthographic here with Transverse Mercator, it will um, obviously manipulate the projection function that we're using here. So um, let me let me just rewind a second. So we have a scale, which uh, scale of our projection, which I've I've determined by dividing the height by by two point five. I mean, this is just a sort of um, arbitrary value that I've. Um, I don't know, found, found the most appropriate value. Um, you see if I reduce it there, it gets uh, even smaller. Let's, let's put that back, that's getting, that's making me dizzy almost. All right, okay. Um, so the center point, we define the center point and we use that to uh, effectively fix the center or trans or translate our, pro our projection so that we, 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 we set it uh, to to the middle of our canvas. Now, center here, um, actually this is in coordinates, latitude, longitude coordinates. Um, so this is, this is to do with the actual geographic center and center point here. This is to do with our um, sort of visual center. So um, this projection definition helps us to set up 
D3's path function, which we actually use to describe the shapes of the path, uh, the, the, the shapes of the land masses that we're going to be drawing using geographic data later on. Um, so path also, uh, D3 geopath, takes in the projection, it also takes in that drawing context. So path is a uh, is generated as a function that we can use to to, to draw things. Uh, and in this case, we'll hand it um, geographic data and as it's kind of been configured by uh, by projection here, it will following the rules of uh, the behavior of those different projections that will will draw land masses or whatnot uh, that, that, that's handed to it um, with some uh, geojson. Um, so next I have a render function and here I'm sort of telling <clears throat> here I sort of describe how I'd like the uh, how, how I would like the drawing to go down. So um, the first thing in render is it, I have this um, clear rect uh, function and I'm just using this to kind of blank all drawing and start off making sure that the, the, the canvas is completely blank. Um, this makes a bit more sense later when as I get into describing the way that the um, the spinning works, we're going to be rendering multiple times. So, in fact, if you don't do this, it will just sort of keep painting over what was there before. Um, so you get this effect of paths and shapes being drawn on top of each other. Um, which isn't really what we want. It looks okay at the moment, but because we're drawing on top of what we did previously, but we want to just sort of blank it. Especially as you might have noticed there, there was a bit of transparency and it was kind of ruining the, the, the transparency there. So when you draw using Canvas, you have this the idea that you, you, you begin paths and you close paths. So in between the begin path and the close path, we have the uh, we call path and, pa and pass in some geographic information so that it can actually go and draw something. We determine, so that goes off and basically describes a shape. Um, and then we, we tell it how we would like that to be filled. Um, and I've set it to this kind of mimosa yellow color. And I've also specified a stroke and a stroke style and a line width. Now that, let me explain that a little moment. You might notice how the globe here has a sort of transparent atmospheric style uh, halo around it. And that has been achieved by, um, by providing this stroke, um, basically drawing a line. Um, around what is basically just a circle. For the seas, it, it's pretty much just a circle. And that outer atmospheric halo is um, achieved with a little bit of transparency in the color. Um, so it's the same color, but you see this AA on the end there, that's um, uh, that extra um, bit of hex value is uh, a little bit of, of, of transparency. Um, so that's what's going on there. And um, the next begin and close path is the drawing of the land. And, um, oh, I forgot to say, so, you know, you, you need to, uh, in Canvas, you, you open, you go you, between the, the beginning of a path and the closing a path, you're describing a shape, but you haven't filled it yet until you actually call fill. So um, that's why we're saying we want to change the fill style um, to, to this kind of yellow color and we're going to fill it to, to, oh no, 
Did I? Uh, oh, sorry. I think I let me rewind a second. Sorry. So this is the yellow one because it's a landmass, and that's the kind of periwinkly, purpley color um, over there. All right. I got those mixed up. Anyway, as I was saying, if we didn't change the fill style here, it would um, stick to using the previous one that it used, which is that periwinkle color. So we're going to make sure to kind of uh, set that. So it's almost like our context, we tell our context to dip the brush in a different, uh, different paint pot. So that's the that's the end of the render function. Now, um, notice the render function is being passed sphere and land. Path we've already kind of talked about, um, but sphere and land, where do they come from? Well, this comes from a uh, the geographic data that we go off and we get um, remotely. Um, so this is like hosted by NPM and we've got a uh, JSON of basically the shape of the land masses in the world. So um, this comes down, it's it's to in top of JSON and there are basically there's, there's uh, two features that we're, we're using here. One is the actual land mass uh, top of JSON feature and the other is just the spherical shape um, for for the seas and for the rest of the planet and our topo json uh, our topo json <clears throat> sorry our topo json module that we imported earlier helps us translate that topo json into into geojson that um, the d3 path function will understand and uh, now let me move this around a little bit. We don't need that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna turn this uh, spinning off just to demonstrate to you that this is all we need. Everything we've written so far is all we need to generate our globe projected at uh, centered at zero zero. Okay, so I'm gonna. Reintroduce the spinning, uh, the rotation, and this is achieved by using the D3 timer function, which is designed for animations. Um, so if you have a look on uh, the module home on GitHub, um, it talks about and basically all it does is it just repeatedly invokes a callback um, until the timer is stopped. And that's that's all it does. And you can provide a delay before the um, it starts triggering those callbacks. So this function inside here that keeps just getting run and elapsed, it will give you how many milliseconds can have elapsed since it's first started. And it just keeps going round and round and round. And if you uh, return instance, then you can start control the animation within. Um, so let's go into it. Now, projection.rotate without any arguments returns the current rotation of <clears throat> the projection. So <clears throat> that's uh, three angles. Um, you, the, the yaw, pitch, and roll. Um, that the planet is is, is currently positioned at, uh, rotated at. Um, so you've got the current rotation. Um, next, we define this uh, K value, a sensitivity that's being set to uh, 75 based on the scale. So this is about how quickly we'll want to uh, uh, rotate that, right? So we could manipulate that and see what it's like with a uh, lower sensitivity it goes a bit slower and then we could do up to 105 kick it up a notch see what it does yeah it goes a bit faster but 75 looks nice so we this time around 
we call rotate providing some angles and we're manipulating it by a subtraction of um of a value of k so we've manipulated our like projection configuration and then we regenerate that path function and call render again with uh, sphere and land they haven't changed but our path uh our path function has changed and that's about it really um the neat thing about this because it's canvas i can actually right click and we can open image a new tab and we can have our um the contents of the canvas of what we've drawn we can actually just have those as individual uh, PNG images, which is very handy. So folks, if this walkthrough has been helpful, let me know by dropping me a comment or perhaps getting in touch. Until next time, thanks for watching.